So it hasn't been much since the Nintendo Direct, and in there they stated that we'd get some further details on Rank X, and we actually finally got it. It was posted earlier this morning on the Nintendo Japan website, and conveniently it was posted on the Splatoon US Tumblr page before I even got home. So that's what I'll be reading off today, and it'll be linked below if you want to go take a look at this yourself. But today I'm just going to be looking over some of the things about Rank X and give my thoughts on them. So I guess we'll just jump right into it. The very first thing they state is that people that are already S plus 10 and above will automatically be put into rank X once the update comes out. So if you're S plus 10 or higher, or if you're like me, you're S plus 50, you'll automatically put into rank X the second the update is done downloading. So that's pretty neat, we don't have to climb for that. It also states that S plus 9 is the rank that you would be at before hitting X rank. So in the video when they showed that uh, someone went from S plus 9 to rank X, People like me were saying that it was probably just a coincidence that they were at 9 going to X. Well, it turns out that is in fact the turning point. That is when you will be... Yeah, I guess you'll have a chance to go to rank X. It is technically possible to not get up to rank X. Then what's sort of interesting to me here is they also added a chart that shows the difference in ranks and the percentage of players that are in certain ranks. I find this interesting because I've always wondered about what exactly was the spread when it comes to ranks and how many people are actually in these ranks as it feels like S Plus has been pretty bloated since release and has a lot has been a lot easier to get than in Splatoon 1. But according to Nintendo, S Plus 10 to S Plus 50 makes up 1% of the ranked player base. That seems a little odd to me, but also that is a fair amount into S Plus, I suppose. A lot of people could be S Plus and just don't play ranked all that often. S Plus 0 to S Plus 9 consists of 6.4%. The S rank consists of 5.2, the A to A plus is 20.7, the B to B plus is 33, and the C to C plus is also 33%. So there is definitely a lot more people in lower ranks than it feels like. It feels like there's a lot of people in S plus right now, and very often I will see new names more than I will see recurring names. But supposedly there's around 7% of the player base in total in S plus. And a while back, there was a Japanese player that ran a simulation that sort of came up with the fact that, like, in, back in Splatoon 1, there would be roughly about 3% of people in S+. So it's more than double what people would have been in Splatoon 1 have, you know, being based off a simulation and not actual given data from Nintendo. Another thing talked about here is the fact that when you are in X rank, you actually aren't playing to fill a meter anymore. No, you'll actually be going to what would be very similar to Splatfest or League Power and they call it X power. You'll be playing to have, you know, go up in a power level like you would in league matches. So there's no longer filling a gauge to go up the next rank. You will just continuously gain points towards your overall power level when it comes to rank X. And matches will be determined by your power level and you'll be put with people with similar power levels. Then here it says that there's actually going to be a leaderboard for X rank as well. So once a month for the four modes, the top 500 players, the highest power will actually be listed in Splatnet alongside the weapon that they use to get up to that power. So it'll be a leaderboard very similar to that for the Splatfest leaderboards. Then it also says it'll make notes of people that get high X power using specific weapons and allow people to see who got the highest amount of X power with that weapon. So for my, in my case, say I play Octobrush a lot in the X rank Rainmaker and I happen to get the highest X rank power of all Octobrush users in X rank but I might not happen to get, you know, in the top 10 or even close to top 1, it'll actually still show me to people that are looking to see how high Octobrush players go. So if I get the highest of all Octobrush players, then for that weapon I'll be shown as number 1, but overall I could be like, you know, 100 or whatever. And then it states that at the end of every month, the X rank will also be reset, and you'll go back down to having to calculate for your power again. This will be along with the rankings for the previous month will be posted, you will be reset, and you will actually can lose your X rank if you don't maintain a certain power level. So if you go too far down in uh, X rank power, you will drop back down to S plus 9, regardless of where you were in S plus apparently. So that's pretty interesting. It'll actually be a bit more, uh, you know, brutal than actual S plus rank is. So I'm actually looking forward to that. And while not specific to X rank, I do want to still talk about some of the other things posted in this Tumblr post. And one thing is that they mentioned that weapons will no longer be released once a week when the update drops. Instead, they will be releasing a batch of several 
once a month. We don't know how many, we don't know when it's going to happen. All we know is now they plan to change it to giving us a batch of weapons. Then here it also states that map updates, so when a new map comes out, is going to actually happen closer to Splatfest now. Then the very last thing is a very interesting change and actually is something people have been talking about in the competitive scene a bit and that Nintendo is now, for ranked matches, they're going to enforce a restricted map list once Rank X comes out and a map list that will change monthly. So they're saying here that every month each mode will have a set eight maps and so you will only cycle through those eight maps for the month and then when the next month rolls over there will be eight new maps for the mode. Like I said, this is actually something the competitive scene has talked about as the more maps that get added to this game and the continuing of having four modes in the game as well when we play tournaments, it adds a lot of, you know, having to learn a lot of maps and mode combos and we end up with a huge problem where we have to just, you know, memorize how we play each different map and each different mode where, for those of you who may not be aware, in Japan, their tournaments primarily only use splat zones. So while, you know, right now, say we have 20 maps, well, we have to learn 20 times 4, where in Japan they only have to learn the 20 maps because they don't care about Tower Control, Rainmaker, or Clan Blitz. And so people have now thought about, you know, restricting map lists for tournaments, and now while this discussion is going on, Nintendo decides that they're going to step in and do just that for the ranked modes. It's definitely going to be interesting. I'm going to I'm going to assume that this means that they're probably going to fix some of the maps that have been more questionable as a couple of maps have been removed from the ranked rotation. So that's pretty much it for all of this post. It's definitely going to be interesting to see when rank X comes out and how much this will actually change. This does this does have the potential to fix the problem with the ranked system as it is a little too easy to be in a high rank, especially like right now because S plus isn't too bad to stay in. And the, though there's some people that said that this doesn't mean anything, that people are still going to, you know, get into X rank. However, because now they're going to have to consistently win and, you know, hold a high power, it's more likely that they will, you know, fall as there's no checkpoint to hold them here. And then you'll get the people that might not play ranked as much, so they're probably not even close to S plus 9, possibly. So we won't have to worry about those people coming in. I'm I'm interested. I'm, you know, maybe a little bit too uh, cautious about it. I want to say that X rank is going to be good, and it's going to help fix some of the problems and make me want to actually play solo more. But who knows? We'll have to see. We'll have to we'll see what all happens with all this. I'm definitely interested in the leaderboards. I want to see how that's going to work out. I'm interested to see if uh, we'll have to actually calculate our power once you know the update drops because it does say people like me are going to automatically already be in X rank, but I wonder if it already has a power level or if I'm going to have to do like the uh, the calibration matches. So yeah, I want to hear everyone else's thoughts on all of this. Feel free to leave a comment below. Again, the link to this will be in the description, so if you want to go check that out and read through it, you can feel free to do that. But yeah, so thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.